All right, class. Uh, so we are starting the 7.1 D lesson today. And uh, you may notice that this lesson is already filled in. Um, and that's because I had some technical difficulties and uh, the recording did not record my sound. So fortunately this part one video I am going to re-record. Um, but let's just talk about how we compare functions and decide if something is linear or nonlinear, okay? Uh, so right off the bat, we have an isolated y value. And we know, class, that an isolated y value is a horizontal line. Uh, so we kind of already know that that has to be linear, right? Um, and... You could see that all of my y values are always the same. Uh, and these values are 6, so I know that it's a horizontal line. The x values are changing, uh, but we know that there is no change in y. Right? Why, is the, why is it linear? Uh, because whenever you have an isolated y or an isolated x, the function will be linear. It will be vertical or horizontal. Okay. Number two, we're going to be talking about next lesson, um, but it's talking about the absolute value. Uh, we know that an absolute value, when, whatever you plug into the uh, absolute value inside of the absolute value, uh, the output will always be positive. Um, so y equals absolute value of x kind of looks like y equals x, except that the negative portion of the uh, original output was reflected to the positive, okay? Uh, and I know that you, you know, this still grows at a linear rate. So the function still grows at a linear rate uh, is the main reason uh, why this is still considered linear, right? The rise over the run the change in y over the change in x. Now, I did write depending on the domain because it kind of looks like it's two lines combined, right? Because that's the V shape. So uh, from negative infinity all the way to zero, you have a negative slope. And then from zero to infinity, you have a positive slope. Okay? Uh, for number three, uh, the thing I want you to realize and the thing I want all of us to get used to, to comparing is the degree of x, right? The highest degree. Uh, the, the, the highest degree of x will dictate the overall shape of the graph. Uh, so the fact that we have an x squared, that tells you that this is going to be quadratic. Um, you can plug in values all you want. You don't even need to plug in into a table of values. You already know that just by looking at the equation, the function has to be quadratic because the degree of x is 2. Okay, um, so if x squared is not linear, um, so this is, you know, this is quadratic and not linear, well, then that means the square root of x is also not linear, right? Because these two are inverse operations. Uh, if, the, if the square is not quad, or the square is not linear, then you kind of already know that the square root is also not linear. And on the left, I wrote how the square root of x is really x to the one half power. Okay, uh, so looking at the degree of x uh, in terms of the function equation or the function rule is going to determine if something is linear or not. Obviously, the table of values can determine if something is linear as well. Uh, you just have to have a constant change in y divided by the change in x. So it has to be the same ratio every time. And you can see how in these two examples right here, uh, the change in y is not consistent every time. So you already know that, wow, there's something, it's not linear, it's not growing at the same rate. Okay. Uh, we dive into other examples. So something like number five, uh, y equals two to the x. Uh, well, that's what we call exponential. Right. Exponential is when you have the variable in the exponent. 
right? So uh, you can already, you know that that ha can't be linear, right? We know linear growth is when you have the same amount every time, change, the change in Y. Uh, whereas exponential, it's not even a, a sum or difference. That's the change. Exponential is a certain percent or a certain percentage of change. Uh, in this case, if you have a base of two, you're doubling up every time. And exponential curves look like this, right? Uh, they start off at one or they start off at wherever they, they, depending on what the values are, but usually it starts at one, zero comma one. And then it either doubles, triples. Um, and this is what we call a growth function because it's growing every time. But you could also see an exponential function that will uh, lower in value every time, and we call that a decay function. Exponential functions are what are what you will study more of in Math One, and it's certainly something that you want to get comfortable with, uh, especially because a lot of things grow uh, with a certain percentage. Okay. Uh, okay, so 6, 1, y equals 1 over x. This one's interesting because the variable is in the denominator. So this is just, just, just to get you your feet wet upon the idea of having the variable in a mix, mixed amount of areas. And for the first time in maybe ever, we see that the variable is in the denominator. Um, that's not going to be linear because the variable should always be either on the numer uh, in the uh, numerator or on the side, right? Well, the fact that it's in the denominator means if you plug in zero, uh, it will be an undefined, you won't even have a value for zero. So it kind of has this shape. So um, you kind of already know that this is not linear. Okay. Um, so Using the table of values, describe the qualities you see in the equations of nonlinear functions. Okay, ultimately, class, nonlinear functions have a whatever you see in the change in y, the change in your output, uh, and whatever you see in the change in your input, that ratio, the ratio of your change in y and your change in x has to be consistent the entire time for linear functions. So similarly, if that ratio is not consistent every time, then that means what you're dealing with in the table is not linear. Okay, so here we have eight examples of tables that may or may not be linear. And you can see through my work that I tried to determine which one has a change in y over the change in x and it's consistent every time so for letter a i saw that negative 5 to 0 is a change in positive 5 for a 0 to 1 change in x which is a positive 1. Uh, we call this ratio the first difference because we're trying to decide if um, the first difference is the same or every time if it's constant every time for something to be linear, the, the first difference should always be the same. Okay, so if you look at letter B, you can see how 4 to 8 is a change in 4. 0 to 1 is a change in 1. But then 8 to 16 is a change in 8. 1 to 2 is still a change in 1. Okay, so you this is not acceptable for something to be linear. That means you're actually gaining more, more and more every time. So that's what we call acceleration, right? For something to be linear, you'd have to be moving at the same exact speed or the same exact rate every time. Uh, it's kind of like saying Mr. Quo is running a mile at eight minutes a mile, and he runs that speed or that rate for, for 10 miles, let's say, which is awesome. I wish I could do that. But... Uh, that would be a linear rate of change. So some people, or in some situations, you can see a constant rate of change like that. But in a lot of realistic situations, you'll see that not all uh, 
not all of your outputs will grow at the same rate every time, right? And sometimes you don't want them to grow at the same rate every time. Okay, so this is just a recap of the first two pages. I'm sorry that um, my video didn't record the sound, but that's basically it. Please study these notes and continue to watch my videos uh, to learn the entire lesson. Okay, see you next time.